Well, hey everyone. Uh, welcome to another installment of Foundations of the Faith. Tonight, we are on Lesson 9. And um, I just want to, before we dive into this incredible lesson, which is, they've been good, these are incredible foundational truths, this one being so special, dealing with uh, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, who Jesus is, and what the Word of God says about Him. I uh, just want to make you, uh, remind you, or make you aware that this book, The Fundamentals of the Faith, in which, from which we teach the foundations of the faith, is available through our ministry. And you can email us to get a copy. It's a pretty big book sent to you, to your house, anywhere in Canada. Shipping, book included for $50, and you can use it and photocopy it for discipleship, mentoring people. So, uh, if you want a digital copy, we have this also available for $20 in our office. We'll send that to you. So just simply email us at info at theharvest.ca. That's info at theharvest.ca. And if you're watching on the Canadian Firewall, we want to welcome you here tonight uh, for another lesson, fun Foundations of the Faith. Let's get right into it. Lesson 9 entitled Jesus Christ um, let's go right to the top lesson 9 page 64 what is your idea of Jesus Jesus asked this question whom do men say I am then he further asked the question whom do you say I am? I trust that your answer from this study will be as clear as Peter's revelation of Christ by the Holy Spirit. Indeed, through this lesson, may we actually come to a greater understanding, revelation, uh, and even relationship with Jesus Christ through this lesson. Now, as it says here, the Bible, from cover to cover, is a revelation of Christ to us. Psalms 40, verse 7 says, In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Alright, so, let's go. Number one, Christ in the Old Testament foretold. Now, by the way, you won't read this in here, but I'm just going to say there's over 350 various prophecies in the Old Testament concerning Jesus. Let's look at a few of them. A. To Adam. Genesis 3.15 God says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, or you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and you shall bruise his heel. Obviously, Adam and Eve we're already, you know, uh, we're existing. And, uh, but God prophesied to the service, says, listen, her seed, like what's coming, is going to bruise, you know, bruise your head. It's going to step on your head. You'll strike his heel, but he's going to step right on your head. This is a prophecy about the coming Christ. B, to Abraham. He foretold to Abraham, what did he say? Genesis 12, 3. And you shall, in, 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 in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Wow. See, to Jacob, Genesis 28, 14. In you and in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In other words, he said, through your seed, through something that was yet to come, through Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. D, to David. What is, how did he foretell it through David? 2 Samuel 7, 12 to 17. If you want, and then again, we do not use this program to read all the scriptures. But if you want to um, go through them, that would be much beneficial to you. Take the time, go through them. We're going to, we just really, we're going to touch base uh, on, on, what you know is even in the book and give a little clarity as we go to David he said 
your throne shall be established forever. David's throne. In fact, it says in the New Testament, Jesus is going to sit on the throne of David. Interesting. Um, Luke 1, 33-33. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. So this is speaking about the Christ. The Lord shall give unto who, him who... Jesus, the throne of his father, David. Now remember, Jesus, as it says, was from, or so they thought, the lineage of David. Indeed, his stepfather, Joseph, was of the tribe of Judah, the lineage of David. Uh, But Jesus actually had to be adopted into that family, which is an interesting concept. We're not going to necessarily go into that right now. Number two, prophecy as how to as how Jesus would come and its fulfillment. A, the seed of a woman, Genesis three fifteen, her seed. Galatians four four, made of a woman, Jesus was a very real man who was born of a very real woman. Okay. Jesus was 100% man. 100%. He was a full human being. Born of a woman. B. The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis 8.18 All the nations of the earth shall be blessed by him. Acts 3.25 And in your seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Genesis 17.19 I will establish my covenant with him and with his seed after him. Acts 3.25 Shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Wow. Numbers 24.17 The star out of Jacob, as it says. He will be as a star out of Jacob. Luke 3.34 The genealogy back to Jacob, Isaac, and... uh, Isaac, Jacob, Isaac, and even Abraham. This is how Jesus would come through the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, born of a woman, and born out of Jacob. All right. C. Born in Bethlehem. Micah five two. Remember, I made a statement. There is around three hundred fifty prophecies. We're not going to get through them all, but we're going to cover some of them. Of how it was foretold that Jesus would come and its fulfillment. Micah 5.2 Bethlehem, out of you he shall come forth. It was prophesied in the Old Testament hundreds of uh, hundreds of years before that he would come and be born in Bethlehem. Matthew 2.1 Jesus was born in Bethlehem, as it says. So in Micah it says he would come from, and of course, Matthew he was born. Um, the prophecy of how Jesus would come and its fulfillment. D. Born of a virgin. Isaiah 7.14 A virgin shall conceive. Now if you read that scripture of Isaiah, you know the prophet said, you know, or God says to the prophet, ask me anything, I'll tell you. And the, and the guy said, no, 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 I won't put the Lord to the test. He goes, okay, I told you to ask, but you didn't. So this is what I'll tell you. A virgin shall conceive and, birth, give, and, and, and bring forth a child. That was 600 years before Christ was born. But of course, Matthew 1.18, found, found with child of the Holy Ghost. Wow. Okay, so Isaiah prophesied it and Matthew uh, wrote about it, found with child of the Holy Ghost. And as it says in Scripture, the Virgin Mary the Holy Spirit put a seed in her. He did not have an earthly father, but he had an earthly mother. Incredible. Incredible. E. Named Emmanuel. God with us. Isaiah 7.14 His name shall be Emmanuel, which means God with us. Matthew 1.23 Call his name Emmanuel. So as prophesied, he would be Emmanuel. And then, then call his name Emmanuel out of Matthew. F. Hosea prophesied 
I called my son out of Egypt. Now remember, he's born in Bethlehem. It doesn't say he's born in Egypt, but the scripture did say in Hosea, I called my son out of Egypt. Matthew 2.14, though, he says he departed from Egypt. There's all these fulfillments. This is like, it's, it's impossible to duplicate this. The, the, the mathematical improbability is, is just absolutely incredible. G, rejected. Isaiah 53, 3. He was despised and rejected, as it says he would be. But in John 1, 11, his own did not receive him not. The anointing, H. Isaiah 11, 2. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. It also says that in, in Psalm 70, 45, 7. Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus said. It was prophesied, and then he fulfilled it. I, betrayed. Psalm 41, 9. Ye, ye, my own familiar friend, have lifted up his heel against me. That's what King David prophesied that the Messiah would actually say. Mark 14.10 And Judas Iscariot actually went and betrayed him, a friend, a close friend of Christ. Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. He was sold. J. Zechariah 11.12 So they weighed for me, for, for my price, 30 pieces of silver. It was actually prophesied. 30 pieces of silver, they would betray him. And of course, Matthew 26, 15, and they covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. It was prophesied that Jesus would be betrayed for 30 pieces. Judas betrayed him for those 30 pieces. Okay, silent when accused. Isaiah 53, 7. Yet he, not, he opened not his mouth. That's what was prophesied, that he wouldn't open up his mouth when he was Accused. Matthew 26, 62 and 63. When they did confront him, Jesus did not answer his accusers, but he held his peace. All right. Number three. Angelic witnesses to Christ. All right. First of all, part one is Christ in the Old Testament, and then how prophecies were told but fulfilled. Number three, bottom of 65. Angelic witnesses to Christ. A. Before his birth. To Zacharias, Luke 1, 9-17. Mainly a promise of John, yet almost a promise of Christ, for John was to be the forerunner. The whole emphasis really was on Christ. Gabriel shows up to Zacharias and prophesied about John, saying you're going to have a son, and he's going to be the forerunner for Jesus. To Mary, number 2, Luke 1, 31-33, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, and he shall be great, called great, the Son of the Highest. To Joseph, Matthew one nineteen to twenty three, fear not to take unto Mary your thy wife. B after his birth to Joseph, Matthew two thirteen, the angels of the Lord appeared. Arise, take this child and his mother, flee into Egypt. Number two, the shepherds, the angels appeared, in saying, of Luke, uh, Luke 2, 9, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all the people. Even the angels testified as recorded. Amazing. Number four, the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ. Let's look at this. A, in a lowly fashion. Luke 2, 7. They wrapped him in swaddling clothes. They laid him in a barn or a manger. The birth of Christ was B, announced to shepherds. Luke 2, 8. For unto you this day in the city of David is the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. C, he's visited by shepherds. Luke 2, 15. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger, returned glorifying and praising God. D. The birth of Christ was revealed to the Spirit by the Spirit to Simeon, Luke two twenty five, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus, and and he came by the Spirit into the temple, and he said, "This old man who said you're not going to die before you see the Savior, 
This was what the Holy Spirit spoke to him. But he grabbed baby Jesus and said, My eyes have seen your salvation. E. The birth of Christ was implied to the wise men, the astrologers, through observation. It says these men were likely from Babylon, noted for its astrologer priests who had studied the stars for more than 3,000 years. They were great men in philosophy, science, and medicine, and held in high regard or repute. Indeed, it's actually written in different writings of the old, some old literature that they were under the tutelage years before, 400 years before, under Daniel. Incredible. All right, Daniel actually laid up the treasure for baby Jesus, which the wise men 400 years later said, that's the star, those are the signs, let's go. The birth of Christ, F, was, was uh, sought by wicked Herod. Matthew 2, 3, Go and search diligently for the young child. When you found him, bring word. Herod, the prime minister of the day, sought for him. But in Matthew 2, 19, Joseph has a dream and told not to return back that way. Um, sorry, the wise men were told not to return back that way. All right. Number five, the nature of Christ. Are we good so far? 1 Timothy 3.16 God was manifest in the flesh. We must understand the dual nature of Christ. Jesus was the God-man. We could say He's God incarnate. The incarnation means enfleshment or made flesh. God became man. This does not mean that He ceased to be God. A. Humanity of Christ. Galatians 4.4 4. Made of a woman. Mm-hmm. John 1.14 Made of flesh and dwelt among us. I love it. In John 1.1 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And of course, verse 14, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Romans 1.3 The seed of David according to the flesh. Luke 1, 35, he was born of a woman, born of Mary, who was flesh. All right. Number one of A, he grew as other human beings. Luke 2, 40. The child grew. He had a body just like us, and he had to grow. Luke 2, 52. He increased in stature and in favor and in wisdom with both God and men. He increased in stature. He grew. Romans 1 3, the seed of David according to the flesh. That was the nature of Christ. He was human. Number two, he appeared as a man. John 4 9. How is it that you, being a Jew, well, you look like a Jew? And Jews are human, they are flesh. John 20 verse 15. He was, they actually mistook him the, after the. The, the, the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Christ, they mistook him for a gardener. So he looked like a gardener. He, uh, he had flesh just like a gardener. He had the appearance of a man. He was a man. 1 Timothy 2, 5 says, The man, Christ Jesus. Jesus was human. Number three, he, pest, he possessed of a human physical nature. Hebrews 2.14 The children are partakers of flesh and blood, but also himself likewise partook of the same. Luke 24.39 Behold my hands and my feet, he said. That's what he said to, to uh, Thomas. Look, my hands and my feet. Come on, stick your fingers in my feet. See how I'm flesh. Luke, uh, Matthew 4.2 it said afterwards he was hungry because he had fasted for 40 days and he was hungry. Flesh gets hungry. John 4, 6 being wearied by his journey. He was a man who could be wearied just like your flesh, just like my flesh. Number 4 at the beginning of at the bottom of page 67 he had a human name. Acts two twenty two, Jesus 
of Nazareth. Well, Luke 19.10, he was the Son of Man. The Son of Man. All right, B, top of page 68. Now, we've dealt with the flesh. Now we're going to deal with the deity. Dio, Dio, Dio means God. The God aspect of the Messiah or of Jesus. Here we go. B, one, ready? Number one, he was called God. John 1, one, the word was God, I just quoted it. And the word was God. Hebrews 1, eight. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. John 20.28 20, My God and my Lord and my God. Titus 2.13 The great and God Savior... Jesus Christ. Amazing. That is what Titus and John stated. 1 John 5.20 The true God. He is the true God <clears throat> and He is eternal life. Alright? Number two. He's called the Son of God. Not just God. The Son of God. Matthew 27.40 40. For He said, I am the Son of God. That's what He said. John 5.25 the voice of the Son of God is what he was called. John 10.36 Accused of blasphemy because he said, I am the Son of God. He was accused of blasphemy. He equated himself with being the Son of God. Matthew 8.29 Thou Son of God. And he accepted that title when people called him that. Matthew 14.33 Of true, of truth thou art the Son of God. Matthew 16.16 16, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, as Peter said to him. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Mark 1.1 1, 1, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark 4, 61-62 Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am the Son of God. John 1, 14-18 He is the only begotten Son. John three sixteen, as you know, in 18, we must, we, that's a very famous scripture verse, says we must take a distinction between our sonship and His. He is only the truly begotten Son of God. All right. Number three. He was worshipped as God. Matthew 2.11 The wise man worshipped Him. Matthew 14, verse 33 And they worshipped him. Luke twenty four fifty two, and they worshipped him. John five twenty three to twenty four, honor the son even as they uh, even as they honor the father. In fact, I just want to say it like this too. Jesus said, "He goes, do you believe in the father? You believe in the father." Well, believe also in me. John 9, verse 38. And they worshipped him. Acts 7, 59. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. At the bottom of number three. Christians of all ages have not been satisfied with just admiring Christ. They have adored, they have worshipped Him. And He is worthy of our worship. Because He is God incarnate. 
He is the Son of God. He is the exact representation of God. He is God. All right. Good. Let's go on. Number six, bottom of page 68. Acts 20, 31. Lord Jesus Christ is his full title, as it says. The Lord Jesus Christ. He is Lord, which equals God. He is Jesus, which equals humanity. Jesus was human. The Christ, he is the anointed one. Christ means the light bearer of the anointed one. In Acts 4.33, it said, Lord Jesus. John 9.38, Lord, Lord, he said, I believe, he said to him. In John 20, verse 28, My Lord and my God, as the disciple said to him. Remember in Acts 16.31, Paul said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. All right. Page 69. Numeral 8. <coughs> Number numeral 8. How he proves to be God. Ready for this? This is going to be good. A. By personal claims. John 5.18. Making himself equal with God. That's what Jesus did. He made himself equal to God. John 5.19 for what, for what thing soever the Father does, so also the Son does. Jesus said, well, I do whatever I see my Father doing. John 5.21 Son quickeneth whom he will. John 6.31 He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said in John 6.35, I am the bread of life. John 6.40, I am that bread of life. He said, I am, and then he said, I am that. <laughs> John 8.12, I am the light of the world. John 8.19, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. Wow. John 8, 24. If you believe not that I am He, you shall die in your sins. John 8, 29. He that sent me is with me. That's interesting. John 8, 33. There's a whole story there. I really read that one. Verses 33 to 58. But Jesus said to the religious leaders, listen, here's the deal. Before Abraham was or existed, I am. That ticked off the religious leaders. They didn't want any human ever trying to equate himself with God. I don't blame them. I don't blame them, but Jesus, on many occasions, called himself equal to God. Amazing. You guys good? John 10, 9. Jesus said, I am the door. By me, if any man ever tries to enter, he's not... He, uh, if, uh, by, by me, if any man enter by me, he shall be saved. I am the door. If you come by me, you will be saved. John 10, 11. I am the good shepherd. John 10, 30. I and my Father, we are one. Wow. Big claims here. John eleven twenty five. I am the resurrection and I am the life. Good? Still good? Okay, we're at the bottom of page 69b. Immutab immutably claims, or unchanging. He's uh, immutable. He's eternal. 
Hebrews 13.8. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What a claim. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the same. Yeah. C. Top of 70. He's self-existent. John 5.21 and 26. It says, So He has given to the Son to have life in Himself. He's given the Son to have life in Himself. John 1.4 In Him was life. In Him was life. Hebrews 7.16 Made after the power of an endless life. John 17.5 Glorifying Thou with Me, Thine own self with the, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Wow. Or in English it says, <clears throat> You glorified me with your very self, with your glory, which I had with you <laughs> before the world even was. Before the world existed, I was glorified with you. Wow. D. Sustainer and Creator. Colossians 1.16 by Him, all things were created. That's what Paul says to the Colossians. By Him, who? Jesus. All things were created. Colossians 1.17 And by all things, by Him, all things consist or exist. E. Forgive sin. Mark 2, 5-10 are you good? So everyone's good. E. Son, thy sins are forgiven you. Who can forgive your sins but God alone? That's an incredible story, actually, the five verses. Jesus forgave sins. Luke seven forty eight. He said to the to the man. Whose lady goes, Your sins are forgiven. F. He raises the dead. John 6, 39, 40, and 54. He goes, I will raise him up. John 5, 21. For as a father raises up the dead and quickens them, even so the Son quickens whoever He will. Incredible. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to throw a little something out there for you guys. Jesus was, and is the re exact representation of God. The God aspect of Him raises the dead. But Jesus did leave His glory behind as it says... I was with you, I, you know, before, before the world was, I shared glory with you. But Jesus left his glory behind and he came and actually the miracles that he did, he did as a man. He did as a man because he says, now go and do likewise. Well, you and me are not God, we're men. But submitted to God, submitted to the Holy Ghost, and God through us does God rend miracles. Just an interesting footnote. Jesus did. He showed us what could be do done through the man or woman of God who is surrendered to Jesus, to God Himself. All right. John five twenty five. Hear the voice of hear the voice of the Son of God, and they he, they that hear, they shall live. Because Jesus did pay for our sins. And those who follow His voice shall be saved. Those who believe in the sacrifice and follow Christ. Alright. G. He is the judge. John 5.22 He committed all He committed all judgment unto the Son. God the Father gave all judgment, judging authority to the Son of God. To Jesus. Acts 17.31 
you will judge the world in righteousness by the men whom he had hath ordained. He will judge the world according to righteousness by that man who, Jesus, whom he has ordained. Now, 2 Timothy 4, 1 says, The Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the living and the dead. Jesus is the one who will judge the living and the dead. All right? All right. You know, earlier it was actually number 7. It was a typo. Now we're in Roman numeral 8. This is number 8. Bottom of page 70. He possesses all the divine attributes. Divine mean, meaning godly. A. He's om, omnipotent, omnipotent, or all powerful. Omnipotent, omnipotent. A. Matthew 28 18. All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Revelation 1 8. He says. He is the Almighty. Ephesians 1, 20, verse 22. See Him at, his, at the right hand, and he, he, will, he, put, he will put all things under His feet. Who? That is the Christ. He's at the right hand of God, and everything will be under His feet. Jesus has all power. He's almighty. Okay? There's many other Scripture verses there, too, that you can look at. B. He's omniscient, which means he knows all things. John sixteen thirty. Now, are we sure that you know us all things? John two twenty four and twenty five. He knows all men, and he knew that he was in man. Wow. He knew all men, and he knew what was in all men. He's all knowing. Colossians two three, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He is omnipresent. See, he's everywhere. Matthew eighteen twenty, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I. And Ephesians one twenty three, he fills all in all. He's everywhere. Well, you guys, that was Lesson 9 of Foundations of the Faith. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week with Lesson 10 on guidance. Remember, make sure to go through those Scripture verses. Take some time, especially if you're new to the faith. Find out all the different... It's incredible on who Jesus is, was, and is and forever shall be. So thank you for this lesson. Foundations of the Faith. We'll see you next time.